Hey everyone and welcome back for another VPI talk. Unfortunately still not in full video form. Had a whole bunch of technical difficulties and it keeps leading to any content getting delayed. So I figured I'd do a quick one. There was a question asked on Facebook tonight about the difference between a Classic 1 and Classic 4. So I thought I'd quickly do a uh, one of these videos uh, to explain the difference between the two. Now both the Classic, uh, classic 1 and Classic 4 are discontinued at this stage. But still, there are tables out there. There are classic ones uh, through four uh, out on the market that are available either on the used market or, or uh, leftovers from dealers who still have them. So it's worth taking a look at. First, the classic, the classic one. Now, a little bit of history. It was actually never meant to be a classic one, two, three, four, all that fun stuff. That actually came from the reviewers. The original was the anniversary, that was our 30th anniversary classic turntable. And it was a 10-inch metal unipivot tone arm with 2-inch thick machine aluminum platter that we all are still familiar with on our Prime series on up. And a 600 RPM motor with steel plate on top and a walnut veneer with our classic feet that we know so well, the machine Delrin isolation feet. And that was it. That was the table. Going through it, though, at one point, uh, my dad, Harry Weisfeld, had done an upgrade for one of the reviewers who really liked the VTA base from the TNT. So he put it on there. The reviewer did the whole thing. And then he named it the Classic 2. Of course, if you have a Classic 2, you got to have a 1. So then the original Classic became the Classic 1. And at that stage of... Uh, my dad's life, he was just like, ah, it's all good, whatever. Now we have one and a two. Then, as it went along, then we had the classic three, which is everything of a classic two, of having the two-inch thick classic platter, having the VTA base, but the table itself was a much thicker chassis with a thick piece of machined aluminum on the top plate and a thin piece of steel right underneath it. The arm, the VTA base was the same, but the arm was actually um, using, I believe it started with, no, no, it was uh, Nordos wire first, then Discovery wire, and it, so the arm wire itself made a couple of changes throughout the years. That was uh, prior before VPI consistency, so that, that changed a little bit. And the arm was the signature arm, which had additional dampening and was a combination of both steel and aluminum for the tone arm itself. Then it brings you to the Classic 4. The Classic 4 was another table that was not really supposed to be made. Harry had made the Classic 4 as his own personal table to use at home. And he, he wanted to mount a second arm, and he liked the idea of messing around with multiple lengths and everything. So the Classic 4 is just an extended Classic 3. Now, the Classic 3 was later renamed to the Signature, if I accidentally say that instead. So the Classic 4 was just an extended Classic 3 that had a larger profile and it included a ring clamp at the time and the arm was extended to a 12 inch arm. Build wise everything was the same and of course you can look at further detail of, of any of these tables on our website in the legacy table section but a direct comparison between the Classic 1 and Classic 4 as far as what you have or don't have, the Classic 1 has the 10-inch arm. The 10-inch arm, of course, because of that size profile. And anyone who tried putting a 12-inch arm, which was doable in a DIY setting, had the arm drastically hanging off the edge, which was majorly dangerous if you were, you know, have children or anything and, and were worried about having that $5,000 cartridge hanging off the side. Mm -hmm. The motor, again, for the Classic 1 was a 600 RPM motor. With the Classic 4... It was a 300 RPM. The lower the RPM, the smoother and quieter the motor is. Nowadays, all VPI tables from Prime Scout on up use a 300 RPM motor. The VTA base on the Classic, it has a VTA base, but it was not on the fly. So you'd have to change your VTA in between the records or in between tracks while adjusting. Whereas Classic 2 on up has the VTA on the fly, making it easier to adjust. Now, why the longer arm? And this is, again, one of those preference moments because you ask some listeners, they prefer shorter arms and feel that is the better approach. The argument being that the rigidity of the length is gives you a little bit more on the low end, a little more kick and dynamics. 
and arguably the longer, well, not really arguably, it's, it's true, the longer the arm, the less tracking distortion, so that 12-inch arm, or whatever longer length, then makes it easier to track the inner grooves, um, gives you uh, more, more tracking and detail from vocals, especially the female vocals, and the other thing, which not everyone's aware of, my dad, Harry Weisfeld, he was really into classical music back in the day. He still is, but... And with classical music, he liked having, he liked developing product that was really good at picking apart the layering. So you have that, uh, uh, the strings and, and the horns, and everything at once. And he was really into having all of the tracking of the notes in detail to make sure that you can get all those, those different uh, colorations of the instrument. But so that's a quick little summation of um, the differences between Classic 1 and Classic 4. For those who are interested, I hope this, uh, this covers a bunch of different things. And uh, stay tuned for next time for some VPI talk. And hopefully I'll have some actual video uh, so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, my plan after recording this is to actually throw some pictures with the vocal recording here. Uh, hopefully that'll work. If that doesn't, then you probably are just staring at a picture of the VPI logo. If it does work, then hopefully you'll have some visual aids to go along with it. Again, I'm Matt Weisfeld. See you all next time.